Shall we leave the bottle? <laughs> yes, we shall leave it. And, and I'm, I'm about to pour it. Um, a beautiful red Pinot Noir, just beautiful looking. We were uh, harvesting uh, grapes, and Ben and Bruce happened to be in the vineyard right next to us. And uh, uh, Ben asked, uh, are any of those grapes available? And I said, Ben, they're all sold. Uh, but, uh, oh, he says, I, I, I'd like to have some. So uh, I, I got him two, two bins, which was a ton the first year. And that was, will be 21 harvests ago uh, this year. And uh, he uh, made wine out of them, kept them separate. And uh, uh, before you know it, uh, the next year he was buying most of them. And uh, we, we continued this relationship with Ben and Bruce for the last 20 years, 21 years. And uh, uh, it, it's been a wonderful relationship. Uh, we now are doing business with Yolanda and Ben and Renee and, and continuing and, and we hope to be able to continue forever. We, we uh, have uh, uh, an evergreen with them, uh, which is two years plus a year renewing any time, every year automatically for, for life. And uh, I, my, my wife and I are getting old, but we have our son Todd here who's going to continue the relationship and uh, hopefully continues uh, farming this the way we have. I've been trying to teach him to farm it. I've been trying to show him and then I've even threatened him. I tell him, you know, today we're watching the top. Tomorrow I'm going to be watching the root. And you better have them looking the same because when you walk by, I'm going to grab you and bring you right in there with me. So uh, that's a pretty good threat. <laughs> As a home winemaker in the 90s, I was getting fruit from Al Mazzetti, which is a neighbor. And uh, one of uh, his neighbors, Al's neighbors, was uh, Henry Bissorti, who did the farming for him. And uh, I was talking to him about getting some more grapes. We were looking for more sources. And he said, well, my neighbor, uh, Nick Laris is, might have some fruit. So he introduced me to Nick and the first year we made one barrel of, uh, of Laris in 1999, I think one our second commercial year. And, um, and after that we started getting sourcing a lot of fruit from Nick and eventually we took over that whole, uh, this whole upper vineyard, the God's Little Acres. And so um, we've been working with with Nick for 22 years now and um, Nick is a great grower and we get four clones from him uh, yearly. We get the 115, the 667, the 777 and the Pomard. So that, uh, from that vineyard, uh, that 777 goes into our special 777 clone and the Pomard uh, goes in our Pomard uh, special clone bottling. So uh, Nick has been a great asset to us and very, very happy to be working with him. And it's, uh, he's getting close to retirement age, so we're now working more with Todd and uh, Jojo, which has been great as well. But, uh, that's his grandson. Yep, yep, so um, that's been a, a good transition as well. We've been um, uh, selling Papa Beto Perry uh, 
Pinot Noir grapes for the last 20, 21 years. And uh, it's, it's always been one of the best relationships we've ever had with any one of our wineries. And, and we're so pleased that, that the grapes off this ranch have always been in the 90s, uh, just constantly, year after year. The fruit and, and wines that come off here are always, always have the same texture, the same uh, floral, blackberry taste. And uh, we're fortunate enough to be sitting here right now knowing that the last 20, 21 years, I, I've been able to supply Papa Petro Perry wine of grapes for wine and next to me is my son Todd that's going to be supplying it for the next 20 or 30 years. It's an absolutely tremendous honor to be able to be here with my father and uh, learn at the feet of the master uh, the way he cares for the grapes and to think about the prospect of having that relationship with Papa Pietro Perry in the future for the next 20 years. It's a legacy that I want to carry on. Family means everything to me uh, and to my family around me. And we had, we had an experience uh, a few months ago where we were able to go to New York for my son's college graduation and actually open up a bottle of Papa Pietro Perry Laris Family Vineyards at Tavern on the Green, the famous restaurant, and um, I know I'm biased, but uh, Ben is an absolute master. He's done it again with his 2020, and uh, we know that when the sommelier tasted this wine, it was better than any Pinot he had ever served, and that's a legacy that I hope to carry on. Yeah, I've, I've been lucky enough to live pretty close to Nick, so I did a lot of the sampling over the years there. And uh, it's just really obvious. It's a great, it's always been a standout vineyard for us. And, you know, plays a really good, interesting, beneficial role in the lineup. The, the wine's really unique, classic Russian River Valley fruit, you know, really um, expressive. And uh, but also uh, really complex. It's got what we like to call it Russian River dirt on it, which is a good descriptor, really, because uh, it mixes with some really uh, brambly uh, cherry and strawberry and some really great, different from year to year often, but always very solid and uh, gets really good scores too, right? Well, the wine spectator always rated it between 91 and 93 points in a, in a very narrow range, always in the 90s. So exceptional uh, years, we've done very well with the uh, Laris, but also uh, Nick as a person is fun to travel with. He has come with us on a couple of our trips from Athens, uh, from Rome to Athens was a hot one because he had never been, as a Greek American, he had never been to Greece before. So we had the opportunity to travel with him to his first uh, visit in Greece. And then he's taken riverboat trips with us uh, and just great person to have along. We have some great seminars and and fireside chats with Nick. Mm -hmm. we're, we're about to uh, try this 2020 Papa Petro Perry wine. Uh, we've Please been do. sitting here and, and uh, Todd commented that it's, it's hard to just sit here and keep smelling that wine. The aroma is just so floral and, and pretty that, that I'm having a hard time getting past the smell to give it a taste, but I'm gonna do the hard thing and try it. Oh, you've done it again. That's delicious. Very fruity, kind of got its black cherry, uh, floral, little earthiness to it. It is just fantastic. Ben and Renee, you've outdone it again. Congratulations. Another standout thing for uh, that I think about with, with the vineyard is how great it's been to have such a long relationship because obviously the working relationship gets you know better and stronger every year, but the vineyard's also getting older and maturing all these years we've been making the wine. So which is why it's been so consistent. Yeah, yeah. it's it's really, really 
impressive from the beginning, but only gotten better as the years have gone by and the fruit's gotten more mature. I would like to thank uh, Papa Petro Perry for the honor of raising grapes for him. Uh, ben, Yolanda, Bruce, and Renee have been just excellent to myself, and uh, I, I like to see this go on and on and on, and I'm gonna turn it over to Todd, who's gonna make sure that this goes on and on. And I just reiterate something I said earlier, which is if you go up to Papa Pietro Perry and you visit them, uh, and especially if you can see what Ben does with the grapes and how he handles things, you can see that everything is done in a first-rate manner. And it's, it's a tremendous honor and obligation to continue that process with Ben and look forward to it because he is such a perfectionist and he does such a wonderful job with his wine. Cheers. Cheers. Go ahead, Dad. Thank you. Ben, Yolanda, Renee. and Renee, congratulations on a 2020. Thank you. Yeah, so I want to raise a toast to the uh, Laris family who have been uh, solid growers and, and friends with us for, for over 20 years. So cheers. Yeah. Cheers, cheers, here, here.